1000 here and over there monkey 1000 today it's getting a new battery and we'll pull this out she's going to run up and get us a battery and yep let's get into it all right guys so we got a bunch of bolts. We got to take this side cover off here first. If I remember right, there's this, these three and there's one on top. And I can't remember if there's any on the bottom. And this has got those side pipes on it. So I'm not 100% not sure. This is just one of those cheap Walmart batteries the never starts we used to call them and the car's been off the road since 2015 so that's at least seven years and of course he was running it before that so now there is a battery tender on here he used to keep plugged in I've never plugged it in but if I had the money I'd put an optimum battery in it them things you can mount upside down they're dry cell a gel cell or whatever yeah but I'm not paying Almost four hundred dollars for battery for this old girl. <laughs> no. Alright. Then we got one up here. Right there. We got a header gasket header bolts, collector gasket, and collector bolts coming in next week. Right, Mama? Yeah. So we can get this header hopefully moved back enough to where I can get a tap in there and get that cross thread where the bolt was cross threaded to get it out of there. Hopefully. Then we can put new bolts in it and new gasket. Then we'll be able to move it around. We can't drive it on that tire, at least not very far, right, Mama? No, just be able to move it around. It'll be nice. Now it'll be nice to see it going up the road. Well, can't do it until these tires are good. but we will get it. Yeah, but six hundred dollars, the cheapest. I don't even know how long they last, you know. They may last a year and do the same thing, who knows. But that's the cheapest. Well, this car hasn't moved in a long time. Most of the time it was in a garage, but now that it's sitting yeah. out here, it's not good for it. That's the cheapest. Well, they were dry cracking in that garage. Yeah, they were because he had moved it. It just sat there. It's, I mean, I know it's going to need all four. There's no sense in just putting one on. No. Because you can see the other side. And I'm sure the back ones, I haven't really looked at them too much, but I'm sure the back ones are bad too. Mm. They were all bought at the same time. What did your mom give $1,000 for them, for the wheels and tires, wasn't it? Because these are custom wheels. They're not the original wheels. I think she already, they already had the wheels. They bought them before. And then they bought the, bought the tires online, and they just had somebody line it up for them. Balancing. Yeah. That's what she said. So. Yeah, there's one down. The bolt down here at the bottom. But I think I can move this back here out of the way. Like this. You can't get out of there. All right, so now we got to get these. If you're unhooking a battery, always unhook your negative first. That way, if you touch something metal, uh, it won't 
short out, cause a fire or whatnot. And when you're putting one in, just do it backwards. Put your positive on first. That way, if it touches metal, you're not welding shit together. All right. Now let me get a wrench and take these off here. He's got a whole bunch of stuff on here. I know one of these is the battery tender. I'm not sure like where this big one goes, but you should only. <laughs> This car should only have one on each one, so I don't know what all is going on there. But anyway, let's get those out of there. Oh. Okay, that one's huge. Get another wrench. That's 5 eighths. The other one was 9 sixteenths. So. When I first started working on this car, I've been almost three years ago, about two and a half years ago, when it was still in their garage, the battery was still good. Like I said, he had the battery tender plugged into it, which I will do with this new battery. That's what this is for. I don't know if you can see that, that right there. That's for the battery tender. I got it in there. I'm not exactly sure where it is. I just seen it not too long ago. For those of you that don't know, it's just a very... It's not really a charger. It's just a maintainer. It doesn't really charge it up like if it's dead, it would take weeks. <laughs> what it does... Is like it implies it tends the battery it's just kind of like you're leaving your car running all the time so it just puts just enough in it if it starts going low it kicks on charges it let's take these out because these don't go with it you okay yeah you want me. all right now this should just here, let's back you up here. That way, if something happens, you can get the whole view. The only thing that would happen is that white thing breaks, right? Well, yeah. You really don't want that. No, I don't want the white thing breaking. Okay, so he does have. Is it bolted? Yeah, he does have a. It is clamped in. That's good. Let me go get a long. Yep, thing. Yep. That's what she said. Did you get rid of it? So this sucks. That thing's big, too. He must have been in there. You scared him. Yeah. Whoa! You see how fast he moved? Look at him run. Alright. I don't know if you're in frame. Are they in frame, hun? Not that it really matters. Mm, a little bit. A little bit. That's how you make great YouTube videos. A little bit. Or, or am I in frame? A little bit. That's good enough. Yeah, you can see it. Alright. Well, I'll show them once I get it out of here. What? All it is is a wedge. It just bolts down on the bottom of the battery. That's why I was just telling you about a few minutes ago. And uh, it wedges the battery in the battery tray into here. That's all it does. Now, see if we can break this shark fin off of here. Oh. There we go. That was easy. Uh, Is that a smaller battery than it's supposed to be in there? No. I don't know. It's. <clears throat> Awful small for this. 550 cranking amps. It could be a little small, but you, you don't go by size, you go by the CCA, which is cold cranking amps. There you it want is. The same one? Yeah, just get the same one, should be fine. Uh, this is 2016. Dang. But the car, which is weird. Six years old. Yeah, but the car has been sitting for seven years. The tag is 
Maybe that's, he had it so he could work on it. That's weird. I don't know. So anyway, when she comes back, we'll throw this one back. We'll throw the new one back in. And be done. It's got a go handle. All right, I'll be back with you. Okay, monkey just left. She had to go to Walmart anyway, so she said, uh, because I was going to pick up a battery later on. She said, well, I'm going to Walmart. You just want me to pick you one up. <laughs> okay. So, uh, while we're waiting, I always suspected that this may need a water pump, and this is why. That's a weep hole. That is made to leak to let you know your pump's going bad. Now, it was pumping. It was still pumping right. But if you see that in there, that's water causes that. So that's been leaking. Um, so it is going to need a water pump. But it's still pumping right now. We're not going to drive the thing that far once we... We should be able to give it a little test drive next week. We won't be able to go very far maybe down to the next driveway or up to the next driveway or something because of that tire and like i said the cheapest ones i can find 600 bucks like i said i don't know how long they'll last they're not this brand but they got this style of tread on it and these are directional like this tire can't go over there when you when you uh these kind of tires when you when you rotate them you don't rotate them as you normally would a tire you don't crisscross them you don't change them back and forth you just go front to back that's how you do these that's if they're the same size if you're a lot more custom than this one is if you got a bigger tire in the back you can't you wouldn't be able to you know you can't unless you take them actually have them dismounted and turned then you could but also this thing right here is for balance it's a balance wheel now you can take these off this one's coming off okay because that's a lot of weight hanging off the front of that it actually performed a little better sometimes you can tell a difference actually you know by the seat of your pants when you're when you're driving it sometimes you can tell um that was a balance I believe for the air conditioner or something they found out later they didn't need them and what the thing of it is is they when they came out with these they just used regular water pumps and that's a lot of weight Ooh, thunder that's a lot of weight hanging off the front of that water pump with the exact same bearings as one that don't have one so that's why these went out a lot and uh, her mom informed me yes that he did replace this once it's been a long time ago of course but he he had he he did have to replace this water pump one time and that's probably why notorious for these water pumps going out now this water pump spins backwards when you get these water pumps you gotta make sure on this particular engine the way this belt is set up this turns clockwise so as this belt's going down and up over to the smog pump it's turning this backwards so if you get the other one it's not going to pump so be mindful of that so i think we're going to go ahead and take this off i believe i took mine off without taking the belt off i think the belt just held that right into place for me so let me get some let me get a wrench there's only four bolts that hold that on and i can't see what you guys are seeing right down there. there's only four bolts that hold that on i'll set you up on the tripod let me go get my camera cooled down a little bit it's been in the sun and we'll come out here and we'll go ahead and take that off but yeah um it looks harder than what they are they are kind of a pain but uh to change but they're not too bad i can usually do one of these start to finish in about a half an hour or so all right let's cool this camera down and we'll take that balancer off of there uh, more performance just one of those little tweaking things you can do to get a little more performance so like if I delete this pump the small pump which I think I may do at a later date um, like I told her let's get it running and if everything's checking out okay then we will uh, we'll move forward with it but um, like I said we won't be actually be able to get it out on the highway anywhere yet but to do a good check on the transmission 
because if it's going to need a transmission that's going to have to wait but if just slipping a little bit there's stuff I can put in there to help that and we're only going to drive it around here so but if everything checks out good then like I said we'll put a new water pump on then I'll probably do a small pump delete on this thing I'm not looking for a lot more power if I was I'd have the supercharger back on but we're not going for that we're just trying to get it back to where it's just a good running little driver so all right guys let's go cool down I am sweating badly 12 16 90 degrees feels like 102 well if it feels like it that's what I'm gonna say it is 102 okay guys I, I I'm sorry I know you can't see much but I'm just gonna loosen these four bolts up I have to turn that I can turn it with this this bolt here these aren't super duper tight guys you saw the other two just came right loose now I believe when I said it's a balancer for the for the air conditioner what it's what I believe if I remember right um, pull on this uh, when this like when your engine's idling, 1000 RPM, 900 RPM, when you got the air conditioner on, it's supposed to take away the vibration from this belt. You can go on forums, they'll tell you, you can take this away, it's not a problem at all. We'll weigh this, once this comes off, we're gonna weigh it. Uh, but, if I remember right, don't quote me, but I believe that if you take this off, I believe it was proven on dyno that it will give you five to ten more horsepower and it I do know it'll it revs up quicker um, I know it doesn't sound like much but if you've got a a uh, push lawnmower that's self-propelled bagger mower uh, you think they've got six horsepower engines on them and look what they do so it does make a little difference five ten horsepower here and there you know uh, but it does rev up more you can also get what they call underdrive pulleys for these things where all your all your pulleys are smaller and they're uh, I believe they're billet aluminum and uh, and that'll give you give you more faster revs and it, it really gives you a lot more horsepower um, we're in Florida so I'm not going to be doing away with that air conditioner if we wasn't in Florida I would do away with it um, but we're just going to keep it on there I don't even know if it works if it doesn't work and it's going to take a lot to fix it that thing's going to come clear off of there but if it doesn't work and I can fix it then yeah we'll keep it on there so let me see I gotta find a way to hold this and hang on I'll be back with you now another good idea I don't have any but what you can do if you've got some bolts that'll fit in here what you can do is you can take two bolts or you can put all four in but you cut the heads of them off make sure they're long enough and uh, you can screw them in there and that'll 
also keep this from turning on you because if it turns on you yeah it's kind of a pain you got to take the belt off well it doesn't have to come clear off but you got to loosen the belt and turn it so you can get that water pump pulley lined up with the water pump but I think I took one I took I took one of these off of my vet it's been a long time ago but um, and uh, if I remember right I didn't I didn't take the belt off it kind of stayed in place give this a little spin up here where I can get to these bolts better you don't want to spin that after you get them all out of course yeah you would think with the whole engine compartment open like this with the whole pretty much the whole front end up you'd have plenty plenty of room to work but you know all this down in here still still the same you know <laughs> still hard to get to now you will see it move a little bit but it's all right it should stay right where it is We'll just slide off and out of there. That's heavy. We're going to weigh this thing. <laughs> I mean, look at this. Now, also, over here, there's a water line. Uh, you can't see it. Anyway, there's a water line that comes up and goes into here, runs around, comes out of here and goes into there, or vice versa. Uh, what a lot of guys will do and I'm a lot of guys <laughs> and that's going to happen to this is you take this line that comes from over there I'm not sure if it's a heater heater hose or what but you take that hose off and you hook it onto this one down here that way you're not running 200 degree water through your intake or your plenum you know so and that'll help help your fuel um, if you got a car with some horsepower it'll run better the colder it is that's why if you've ever been to the drag strip you'll see the guys pushing their cars or they'll have like a golf cart pulling them up to the starting line up to the uh, where you do your whole shot and you heat your tires up you'll see them pulling them up there and then starting them up and then as soon as they get off the track they'll shut them off and their crew will be waiting to pull them back to the pit area because they want to keep them engines cool so the cooler we can get this thing to run the better um, I did notice in a box of old parts that uh, see they went all they went all right in fine uh, there's a newer thermostat so 
I do know he had, before it was tore down, he had overheating problems. So I'm just wondering if he didn't take that thermostat out and uh, try to get it to cool to cool it down more. But if you got to do that, there's you know you've got other issues. You know what I mean? I'm gonna turn this a little bit. I'm gonna do a crisscross on these. So there's that one. I'm gonna go to the bottom one just like I do a wheel, okay? Just like you would a changing a tire. Do your crisscross pattern so that thing's on there straight. Like I said, you'll notice the difference how how much cleaner and easier the when you take that off there that your vehicle is going to rev up. So like I said, that is a lot of weight, and I'm down here working talking to you guys <laughs> sorry like I said they don't have to be super duper tight but you want them you want them pretty good tight but usually once you get it tight and you pull that engine over like that give it a jerk that's usually tight enough I've never had one of these come loose ever well I take it back <laughs> I had one it didn't come loose it was loose that was one of those late night in the shop working on the derby car things and you have a couple beers and you go to load it up on the trailer and you hear a knock that don't sound right and you immediately go did I tighten that up because I always took the fans off my uh, derby cars so that way there was more room before that radiator gets into something yes it ran it ran a little hotter but then we started putting electric fans on them All right. Now, if you want, you know, you can grab a hold of this, but you got to be careful not to bend that pulley. But you can grab a hold of it with something to make sure you got them tight. But that's pretty tight. I'm gonna go around them again and make sure they're good and tight. And then when she gets back, I'll get my uh, my fish scale out and weigh this thing because it's unbelievable. We'll measure it too. So, stick around, guys. All right, guys, let's measure this up. Just a little over eight and a half would be, calling that eight and five eighths inches. All right. Like I said, there's some weight there. There's a couple pounds. There's probably two pounds. I'm going to say at least two pounds there. Now, to put that in perspective, this is a dinner plate. That's not a saucer. I'll show you a saucer. Okay. This is a saucer. <laughs> All right. Look at that. So, it, you know, give you some perspective. Like I said, we'll weigh this and see what it weighs, weighs out to. So, yeah, it's got to be, well, it's got to be two pound anyway. Um, see my camera's two pound. Yeah, this has got to be two pound. Pound and a half to two pound anyhow. That's a lot of weight, especially on that little shaft with those, you know, chancy bearings that are in them water pumps. All right, guys. Be back with you in a minute. Okay, guys, I got this on pounds. Let's see how much this thing weighs. Three point four six, so let's call that three and a half pounds hanging off the front of that motor trying to spin. Uh, it's fifty five point four ounces. 
1.70 uh, what is that kilograms so yeah 3.46 pounds three and a half pounds now batteries here we'll get that put back in in a minute I don't know if I'll ever use that for anything but I won't throw it away you know maybe I can make a pulley out of it I don't know but it is a good hunk of steel there all right let's get the battery put back in for it storms okay guys I gotta hurry up got some booming thunder going on in the background here here I did find one wire that didn't have to be on here that came from the alternator and then went back over here to a relay of some sort that uh that this goes to so I'm not sure what that was all about but uh, I put it back the way it's supposed to be made up a new wire all right let's get this on here Come on, damn it. <clears throat> Hate these things. All right. There we go. Now, like I said, this is for the uh, trick for the uh, battery tender. I'm going to hook this up, which I should have did this before I put the negative on, but all right. Starting to rain. This negative here, I'm not sure what it's for, but it was on there. kind of buggered up that's why it wouldn't go in the right way the other way around now all right now we're going to put our hold down clamp on These vets have a lot of um, they're called okay give me a second fusible links back here and there's a couple relays so be careful don't get them crushed in there or something you know
there's that. Now, we'll get our shark fins on here. And just uh, some of these bolts here. All right, so I'm gonna put these on. I'll be back with you. Shoot, and we'll make sure everything's working. All right, let's see what we got. Cool. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, I gotta, it's that security stuff. Always have a problem with that. Anyway, that's not a big deal. That works. Let's check the headlights. Lights aren't kicking on. They used to flip up. All right. Make sure all the ground wires are hooked up. Turn signals working. Both of them. There they go. Shut off. There we go. Hmm. All right. Cool beans. Now, that's done. That battery, I, I should have checked. It might not have enough juice in it. Because usually when it does that and it don't want to crank, you put more juice into it and it'll it'll crank. All right, let's let it quit raining and then I'll do some more checking. Okay, so here's what I'm talking about. I got my boost on there and... That's a bunch of bullshit. The battery's not fully charged. I'll see if it'll take a charge. If it don't, it's going back. All right guys, so there you go. We did a couple things. I got this thing on uh, trickle charge, which is two amp. I'm gonna let it charge up a while. And then I'll try it. Brand new battery, dead. Well, it was too dead to start this. Um, hmm. That's stupid. I mean, yeah, granted it's just a cheap never start, but Man, that's living up to its uh, nickname, isn't it? Never start. You put a brand new one in, and it doesn't start. You shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to jump a brand new battery. So we'll see what happens. I'll take it back. Make sure she got the receipt. But we'll take it back and get another one. But if that's a a prelude to what's what's to come on this battery, I mean, geez, you know, I understand it's a cheap battery, but it. You know, this car's not going to be an everyday driver. It's just going to be a driver. Just something we get in, throw the top down, go for a ride once in a while. This is, you know, this is insane. All right, guys. Well, anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And, uh...
hope your week's going great tomorrow's friday guys right on i know i got an update to do on the uh, onion garden uh they're still doing well so anyway uh, i gotta go get something to drink it's hot <laughs> it's like real feel of 108 now so uh it's it's almost 100 period <laughs> so Shea Bear the Myth Man of Legend gone for now. We'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, the next video will probably, will probably be taking off that uh, unhooking the collector, taking them three bolts off, trying to move. I don't really don't think I have to take that header clear out. Hopefully I don't because that's going to be a pain if I do. But I think it'll come back enough so I can get my little tap in there, try to straighten them. Um, straighten that hole out the threads on that hole if not like i said there's a couple other things you can do to fix them they work i don't like doing stuff that way but you know this is aluminum head so you got to be careful with them so that'll probably be the next thing so anyway guys again thanks for watching hope you have a great weekend coming up stay tuned for more videos we'll see you in the next one bye bye guys and take care